Good morning. Welcome to the Heritage Community Fellowship Adult Sunday School, September 27th, 2020. Today's main attraction is me, <laughs> but it's not really. I'm just happy to see everyone today or hear from everyone lately. And uh, it's great that we can do this. So today we're going to get involved with Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. Your host and teacher is Michael Stachura. So we're going to start today with a question that no one really likes to talk about. Do you ever talk about sin? Do you ever think about sin? Did I commit a sin? Uh, sin's a word that no one really brings up very often, but all of us commit sin sometime, and we all understand that sin is basically something that we do not think is right and also something against our God. I look at the fact that when we all say that we've been in some type of disagreement or argument with someone, we have been absolutely at the point of where we lose our control. And this actually is, is one, of the, one of the sins. It's called anger. You know, uh, in, in a religious context, sin, sin is a transgression against the divine law which is our law of God. It is against the Ten Commandments. And most assuredly, we have somewhere along the line committed something in this issue. We stop and think about some of the things associated with sin, and it's pride, greed, envy, lust, anger, and sloth. When going over this lesson, I decided to make it a point to find out what certain words meant. And transgression was one of them. Transgression is like you disobeying a law. The law says you will not do this, but you go ahead and do it. It's a law. Here I am at a stop sign. I'm not going to stop. You've done a transgression against the civil laws. When you talk about it in a divine presence, it's a, it's, a, it's a direct opposite of what God wanted you to do. God did not want you to steal, but you stole. That is a transgression to God. So I said to myself, that's an interesting word. But better than that, there's another word that I said, I should figure this one out. It's called sloth. At first, I thought it was some type of animal that crawled around on the ground, but uh, this is not the definition of it. Sloth is spiritual laziness. And it's uh, when you decide that, I don't think I want to go to church today. I've had enough of church. I know everything that's going on there. And I say to myself, I'm just going to go against what the rules were. Well, the rules apply to everyone who was involved with Christianity. And we all think sometimes that some of the rules are definitely not rules that we like to keep. But they were initiated and we all think about them in our lives. Today we're going to do Psalm 25, New International Version. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come to those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love. 
for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. Looking into this psalm, it's a psalm of the person asking for forgiveness, asking how he can be a better person, how he can be more connected with our God, how to follow the right rules of the covenant and just do what was expected of him through our Lord. And he is asking and saying to the Lord, I trust you. I trust you with everything you do. I trust you in telling me the right and the wrong. And I trust you in steering me in the direction that I would like to be in. So after examining this prayer, our psalm, a little longer, we come to the, to, the, uh, to the question, gee, sin, back to sin. He is asking God for the forgiveness of his sins. He's not asking God for, for anything big or small. He's asking for forgiveness. And when we look at it, we say to ourselves, what is a sin, really? Do you ever think about what a sin is? I know there's a lot of things that are in people's minds. Sins like murder. How about sins of injustice? How about sins of pride? How about sins of just envy? When you look at these things, you say to yourself, those are sins. But how about when you are doing something? And if, for instance, how about the person who decides that he's going to throw a tomato at his neighbor's front door because he didn't like something he said? Well, that person there, right, actually has sinned because he did it in anger. Then we look at repentance. Now the person realizes that he's done wrong, so he wants to repent for this. So he goes and sees the neighbor and tells him, he's the one that threw the tomato. And this was my reason, but I ask you to please now forgive me. I will clean the door and I will not do this ever again. Now you heard the words, never do it again. Those words right there to some people are firm, they are just, and they mean what they are saying. But there's some of us who believe that we can be in a revolving door with God. Revolving door, sin after sin, same sin, just as long as we ask for forgiveness. And we say to ourselves, well, the Lord said he would forgive us no matter what we did because he will give us the grace. Hmm. I wonder, can I just get by with doing the bare necessities and still be with God and believe in God? Well, this is... Uh, how would you say your thoughts? And in your thoughts, you are saying to yourself, I don't think I'm a sinner. But being a sinner sometimes is not what you think it is. You can sin without even realizing that you have sinned. But you can also sin and realize that you did sin and therefore you need to repent and ask forgiveness. 
and you also don't want to be in that revolving door. So it's strictly up to you when you think about what I've done and how can I remedy it. And with God's grace, this will help you be a better person. So I look at now the fact of, wow, we've talked about sin and a lot of other things, and we understand what it means, but most importantly, we have to understand what was written in that psalm. That was definitely a psalm of forgiveness and asking to be more like God and believe in God and all of his virtues. Please, believe me, you need to ask for forgiveness. I think about sometimes uh, asking forgiveness. I know it's a tough issue to deal with, but I do know that it has to be done. And you need to decide in your life which way is up. So I now want to talk to you about uh, some other things. And uh, one of the other things when we deal with sin is how do we look at it and how did other people look at it? I would like you all today to think about this for a second and then we're going to recite or sing the first verse of Amazing Grace. I'm not a singer, so we'll do a little recitation. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost and now I'm found. I was blind and now I see. Pretty powerful words. When you think about it, who would have, who would have thought of this? I mean, th this is something that needs a little bit of digging deeper and getting the red team involved and finding out how this came about. Well, believe it or not, the lyrics for this song were written many, many years ago, back in the 1800s and the late 1700s. And they were written about a person being saved. And that person's name was John Compton. He was a sailor. He started at the age of 11. And he was on a ship. And in the process of being on that ship, he learned the bad ways of being a sailor. He was probably the most vile and ugly person you would want to meet and just had no good for anything and anyone. Well, he actually uh, grew up and became a captain of a ship. And believe it or not, the ship was a slave trader. He traded in slaves. So here we are, this man going down the complete wrong path of life. One day in a violent storm in the Atlantic, his ship, the Greyhound, was being tossed about and turned and just every hazardous thing could happen in that time. And in that time, he manned the pumps along with the sailors and whoever they could get. And they did this for 11 days. After the 11th day, John said, I can't do this anymore. Tie me to the helm of my ship and I will steer the ship in the right direction. Well tied to the ship, he decided that his ways were wrong. And he started thinking about God and the right things and way in life and asked to be forgiven and saying this within a few hours of that time, they rowed out the ship in the rough seas and came back to port. From that moment, 
he decided that he would be a representative for God against slavery in England. And that's what he did for the rest of his life. He represented people and helping them out. And he was uh, instrumental in getting the slavery abolished in 18, I believe, 1807. But in his lifetime, he had no use for God. And then on a critical time, he said, boy, have I been wrong about all the things I've done, and here I am in a real fix. So he wrote these lyrics. I think that the lyrics explain it for themselves, right? He was a wretch. He was found. He was lost. And he was found. He was blind and he could see, meaning he was blind to the Lord, our God. He was lost. He knew where not to go in life to do the right things. So take this as an example. And uh, this week, one of the biggest challenges I would ask you to do is think about a sin that you have committed. Have you asked for repentance? Have you asked for forgiveness? Have you told yourself that you would never do it again? Well, folks, that's all I have to say for today. I'm sure it is a, uh, a mouthful of uh, items and things to understand, but what we do is we look at all of the facts and we determine what we feel is right and what is wrong in our lives. But remember one thing, God is always watching us. God is taking care of us. God has given us grace. God forgives us. And now I'm going to close with the closing prayer for today. Please pray with me. Loving God, we admit that we are sinners. We confess that because of our sin, we are embarrassed and we do not want to talk about it. But we know that you love us so much that you are ready to, willing to forgive. We need to come to you and confess. Help us do that, for we want to be closer to you in spite of our faults. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Have a good day.